think it is a necessity to constantly connect with beauty and with the love of the natural world. It makes us healthy humans. My name is Leela Jeffries. I'm a photographic and video artist and my focus is working with birds. I've been photographing birds for 15 years and it started off with this kind of obsession that I had about taking portraiture of birds and showing them at human scale. The first exhibition that I held was on budgerigars and then I did an exhibition on cockatoos. I wanted to photograph every species of cockatoo that's found in Australia. And then from there I went on to birds of prey. And then I became really interested about sort of pulling the camera back and looking at flocks. And so I started working with flocks of birds, like these are the Gouldian finches. I think Australia's most beautiful finches. And I went from there to also working with couples. And this is Rain and June. They are a budgerigar couple. They're bonded. You know, they're just so beautiful because they just would not even look at me. They're just always looking into each other's eyes. So they're kind of really fun to work with. I sort of then went on and started working with video art as well. In fact, I have a video artwork that I collaborated on with my friend Melvin called Temple. And the whole concept of that artwork is that nature can be our temple. I've been really fortunate to have all these champions. I got a letter in the mail from Brooke Shields, this actress that just out of the blue wrote to me and said, I love what you do, I wanna help you. It's crazy. And I just got contacted by people that saw my work and just loved it. And then from there, the works have just started to be in exhibitions overseas. Good girl. And I'm so proud of it because I think one of my big missions is about really uh, getting the word out about how extraordinary our wildlife is and how beautiful nature is in Australia. So seeing it kind of go to the international stage is like one of the best things ever. It's amazing. I had a pretty free range childhood. I had a family, parents that were particularly about go out and play in the bush. My mum is actually Indian. My dad was born in the Isle of Man. I was born in Papua New Guinea. My brother was born in Australia, so we were sort of all over the place. And, and all those places that we lived, my dad would always take us out into nature. You know, our family car was a combi. We just drove everywhere. And I always remember if we saw an injured bird on the side of the road, you know, my dad just silently would just pull over, scoop it up, take it home. He'd just want to help rehabilitate birds. And I think that just always sat in the background. And on top of that, I was a bit of a space cadet kid. You know, I wasn't aware of where I was, but I was pinpoint sharp aware of any wildlife or any animal that I came into contact with. I was animal obsessed. Then I grew up and I became a responsible adult and I went to university. I studied photography. Uh, I was terrible at it. I just didn't like photographing people at all. Uh, and I was living a very city, urban life. And so that's when I started becoming a bit of a backyard bird watcher. So we used to have silver eyes and wrens and all these beautiful little birds. And I started to notice that the planting in the gardens have changed. So we're getting the, the bigger trees with the grass and that, that benefits you know, some of the more dominant birds, but the smaller birds are struggling a bit. And so I guess there was this connection between realizing how important it is to help plant the right sort of small bushy shrubs for the little birds so that you can attract them to your garden. I just started to become, I guess, back to becoming a nature lover again and realizing how important it was to have that in my life. And so I feel like uh, the gardeners are like my people, the bird watchers are my people. And, and I've always noticed that there's just so much just kindness that comes from people that are constantly exposed to nature. Like it, it just taps into this beautiful part of humanity. And so I hope through my work, I can, I guess, remind people and help remind us all to kind of go back to nature and connect with nature.
once I had this deep connection with birds again, I had this just idea. I was actually bird watching on Christmas Island at the time and I was with my binoculars and I was looking at the birds and I was just thinking, they're so beautiful. Why is it not everybody can see this? And so I had this idea as a personal project to photograph a portrait of a bird. Essentially, like you think of a photographer's studio, I just brought it right down to bird size and I had like a paper roll and I had a perch and I kind of made this little room with perspex side so I could light from the outside. And then I just sat really quietly with my camera and put the bird in. And you can't capture a beautiful portrait unless a bird is really comfortable. You know, they have to be happy. I've noticed that the energy of a room has to be calm, it has to be quiet, and it gets itself to a point where once you connect, then actually the energy can change. It can be really rowdy and loud and fun. Often I've finished taking their portrait and they won't leave, like they're just loving the attention. So they, they really can interact with you. It's quite a beautiful experience. I suppose I didn't even consciously realise it, but I was starting to show their expression and show their character. And it, it's always been there, I've always seen it. And I think it was about making sure that I capture portraits that enabled other people to see it as well. The way I get access to the birds is through wildlife rescue centres, it's through zoos that have a huge focus on conservation and wildlife, yeah, all these different wildlife places. It's amazing when you start to connect into that network, you'll see that there is uh, all these beautiful people that care about wildlife and I get to work with them. I got them all. I love working with brogues. This brolga that I worked with, she was rescued from young and she's such a big bird, I needed a big set. And she was just like one of the people on set. She loved dancing, like brolgas are known for their dance. And, and so what started out as a quiet set turned into like she loves loud music and she loves everybody being excited and jumping and playfulness. That was what it was like working with her. So it's a good example of how different their personalities can be. So my most recent exhibition is called The Wound is the Place Where the Light Enters and it came from uh, the bushfires that hit in 2020 and the grief that I felt and I think we all felt. The, the, the concept behind the wound is the place where the light enters is that it's often when we go through our most difficult times that we grow and evolve the most. It's when we learn the most. So I photographed birds that had natural colorings and markings of red in them to sort of show their wounds. But the idea is that they're showing their wounds with almost like pride and, and to show that this is how I evolve and grow through my knocks, you know, through, through the difficult times. So the whole exhibition was kind of around that, that concept. So the work that I do is all about making people connect with their hearts to the artwork and therefore connecting with nature.